It is often and so easily and readily forgotten because the filters are so strong that there is no argument here. There never can be and never will be. Only statements to eternity that one is making. And so the more passionately one does so, the more from their emotional center, it could be said, the stronger that statement is. Again, there's no argument to be had from anyone towards this speaker. This heart is presenting the vision of the heart. That's all. And one can take it or leave it, as it's always been said. Take it or leave it. It's that simple. It's also readily forgotten that the entire vision of the earth, of the heart, has been crowned by the mind currently. It's all been affected by the incorrect vision through and through. The animals, the plants, everything of the earth is infected with the wrong vision. There's still so much beauty, of course, but still there's so much incorrectness because it's a flood of incorrectness through and through, through all of eternity, which is the heart, which is the earth. And so in the system of evil that we currently see before us, when one is presented with choice, with the necessity to make choice, it's obvious that the correct choice is the lesser of two evils. That should be obvious, but perhaps it's not, so that's why it's being pointed out. So as a quick example, if one was told that they had to, they were forced to choose between making a cut, and that cut was either a paper cut towards a living being or taking off one of the limbs of that living being. Obviously, the lesser of two evils is the paper cut, so that would be the correct choice. This whole system is a system of evil. It's hell's system, ruled by hell's master for a tiny bit longer, so every choice in the correct manner is about choosing the lesser of two evils that should just be obvious so when people are being clever and trying to point things out in their arguments well there again there's no argument you're just making statements so if that's your belief because you still believe in hell's system and you want to justify your actions then continue to do so it has nothing to do with this heart, with this speaker whatsoever. You're an individual, which the root of that word means to be in an undivided state. You are you and no one else. So your declarations, your statements towards eternity are heard loud and clear and they are yours and yours alone. Truth is not a democracy. It also doesn't matter with what is being presented here, whether anyone agrees with it or not. That's irrelevant. The truth of the heart, it doesn't give one wit about whether anyone agrees with the true vision or not. It doesn't matter whatsoever. Truth is not a democracy. It doesn't come down to a vote saying, look, there's so many more people on this side that agree with this thing. It doesn't matter. That's not how the truth operates. That's not how the truth legitimately works whatsoever. Not in the slightest, not even close. That's the wrong vision again. So when people are presenting their arguments, they're also just presenting them from one of the branches of the wrong vision as well. They're never getting down to the root. And of course, the root, as has just been presented again, is that the entire earth, the entire heart, is infected by the incorrect vision. There's the root. 
So the vision test is all about choice, as has already been stated. And is one making the correct choice, which is of course about the lesser of two evils, closer to that which is good, at the very least, closer. Of course it's about that. You're in the system of evil. Through and through. That's why I have stated I don't believe in a stitch of the vision of this place. Not one stitch. That's exactly why that was stated. Because the whole thing is evil. Absolutely. So when those of you are making your statements to eternity and saying the same thing in essence, the whole thing is wrong, you're exactly right. But is one's approach nihilistic as well? Are you saying, just be damned with the whole thing, forget it, don't even try, I'm just going to continue doing whatever the hell I feel like? Well, that's a nihilistic approach. So, one would rather make the choice of taking the limb as opposed to inflicting the paper cut. Because it just doesn't matter in the incorrect view. One's taking that nihilistic approach and that creates the ability to endlessly justify one's incorrect actions. Endless justifications. Every single day, in every single way, no matter what's being presented. And that's the whole point, is that the correct vision can be presented, but in this system of evil, in hell system, it can always counteract that. It always has a justification, a counter-argument. Of course it does. It's all about cleverness, the clever cleaver. It's all about cutting. Cutting everything to death. I'm not a fan of cleverness. Never have been. It's all part of the wrong vision. So cleverness is just about trying to dismantle the correct vision or the approach to the correctness through justifications. As if no approach matters. There is no correct approach whatsoever. So just do whatever the hell you feel like. And of course, this is very much linked with a hedonistic philosophy. Hedonists tend towards the same ideology. Just go in the pursuit of pleasure. Because that's what this whole life is for. That's all it's good for. Just pursue as much pleasure as possible and then you're going to die anyways. Who cares? It's just pure nihilism. So none of that is correct. The heart never gives up. And it's always leaning towards the choice that inflicts the least amount of harm. The least. Yeah, we know we're caught in hell's system. We're in the incorrect vision, the wrong place. Not that the earth is the wrong place, but the vision inflicted upon it is the wrong place, the wrong placement. So when one sees that, and they are of the heart, they're not nihilistic. One tends towards the good, the least amount of pain that can be seen, because one is seen from their heart. That's what that means. But would one justify and condone their behavior over and over again. Well, there's no argument here. I will reiterate that again. No argument. You are just making statements in your own individuality. It is now a refusal to see completely. It is nearing the end of the hour, the last hour. So close. A will to deny. So what would one do? Continue to choose to stay on the same course? The same incorrect actions? Thinking that it doesn't matter what choice you make? Well, go ahead. 
That's fine and dandy. Has nothing to do with this individual. But my task with all of these messages is to deliver the revelation. Of course it is. That's what it's always been about since it has been declared. That's what's being done. And all of these messages are being done in the dark, which is exactly what this system is going to render everyone into. You're going to be tossed into the dark, every last individual. Unless one chooses the heart, obviously, because that's about following the truth and the light. But this system does not want anyone to do that. It wants one to remain in a nihilistic state, a nihilistic attitude, and to continue making absurd statements to eternity without going through them completely and going back to the root problem, hacking at the root of the entire issue, which of course is hacking away at the root of oneself that is tethered to the wrong vision. One needs to unshackle themselves from that vision, which is the mind. It's a maze, a labyrinth, as has been noted. Cut the shackles, cut the chains, break free from that. Come down into the heart and see what is truthfully. It's the only way, especially at this moment, especially. This is a very significant time that everyone finds themselves in. It is not certain if that is truly being appreciated. Still, so much distraction, so much denial. It's not truly sinking in to one's being. The significance of the moment that everyone finds themselves in and the opportunity that is going to be presented. I very much hope, very much, that there are a few real individuals who are truly listening and have been adjusting the vision within themselves, unshackling, taking it all seriously. I can only hope. Hope is really the only thing that one has in hell. It very much is. When one is lost out at sea in the darkness of a vast ocean, that small glimmer of light in the distance, that's hope. That's what that is. Of course, this system in its reincarnation cycle props that up in its fallacy of the moon cycle. That's what that does. It's just a mock of the true hope that's to come. That's the whole point of this whole wrong vision. Everything is a mock. So when the truth gets presented, finally, it can be touted by this system that it's just another deception. That's the unfortunate fact of the entire revelation as well and what's to come. The mock keeps it very tight to the truth. That's the paradox of the thing. That's again why many who make their declarations are actually declaring the correct thing, but their viewpoint, the vantage point of their declaration is completely wrong. It's from a nihilistic perspective, from a nihilistic vantage point. That's why it's all or nothing, all in. And if one isn't all in, then there's going to be nothing. That's inevitably 
what happens in this vacuum that everyone finds themselves in this taking system this cancer toilet that's flushing it all away while no one really cares or very very few do very very few it will take and take and take until there is quite actually nothing left absolutely nothing Who is observing that fact, that truth? It is happening. Every day it is happening. The siphon. The vacuum. Taking and taking and taking. While espousing this idiotic philosophy that the earth is just going to limitlessly continue to give. And also idiotic scientific theories and proposals about just going to a different earth once this one is used up we'll just go find another one or again as i have already presented the flat earth ideology and just find more land so that the same damn thing can happen all over again and just keep taking and taking and taking and never changing the vision The tables are going to turn. They must be turned. The impossible is possible. The immovable truth is coming. Is one going to be in that, in that immovable truth, in the heart, all in? Or is one going to choose emptiness, the vacuum, the siphon, and the endless justifications that all of that disturbance brings about? Go into it over and over again if necessary. Because it is necessary. <laughs>